Hey there, friends. What a time to be alive, right? We sit here and talk about the attack on our Second Amendment rights all the time, so it's not anything new to us whenever we get another attack from a different angle or from somebody else regarding our Second Amendment rights. But did you ever think in your lifetime that you would be in defense of your First Amendment rights within the borders of the United States? Guys, check out my friends CMMG. They make some of the finest firearms on the planet. You can get them in very different types of calibers, some that you probably aren't going to find in a lot of other manufacturers. You're also going to find them a variety of links and configurations, as well as tons of different colors. These things are nice, some of the best on the market. Check them out. If you happen to be by there, there's a code that I've heard about, FTATF, that if you use it, you actually can save some money. Check it out. Friends, you guys will remember the video that we watched a couple of weeks ago from the UK police commissioner who was threatening, <laughs> uh, don't let the pink shirt fool you, big daddy, uh, who was threatening to come to the United States. Apparently they don't have history books in England. So he was threatening to come to the United States for anybody who incited violence on social media. Well, their definition of inciting violence is a whole lot different than actually inciting violence. He was threatening to come over here, remove us from our country, and bring us over there if we said anything negative about their immigration or migration issues. You see, they have allowed their country to get overrun, and we are seeing that in pockets of our country as well, so let that be a warning to you of things to come if we let it get there. But they've allowed their country to be overrun with illegal immigration. They Remember, they don't have a constitution like us, so there's a lot of things that are not in play over there that we have. In other words, we can protect ourselves with the Second Amendment. They've all but outlawed guns over there. In fact, they've got knife laws over there because obviously once uh, guns were outlawed for self-defense and became more scarce, people started stabbing people and started carrying uh, knives. So a lot of crazy stuff on that little island over there that we beat the snot out of 200 or so years ago. But this guy's still running his mouth. Why? Because there are global issues at play. The globalists, more specifically in the EU, the European Union, have different types of things that do not involve a First Amendment right, a constitutional right. You do not have those rights. The, the main two, one and two, the constitutional amendments, number one and number two, are the ones that we probably benefit the most from over here, and they benefit the least by not having them their country gets overrun, they can't say anything about it, they cannot protect themselves, they are literally prisoners in their own country. And the top, the globalists at the top, won't let them criticize the federal government over there and the things that they are doing to let that country get overrun. Guys, I've driven through portions of London, more specifically, in 2006 or 2007, I don't recall exactly when it was, and there are spots in London back then that when you drove through them, you felt like you were driving in the Middle East. There are little shops set up on both sides of the road, little markets where it's anything from fabrics to uh, food, fish, uh, fruits, um, anything, baskets, all kinds of stuff being sold on markets on both sides of the street the buildings you can tell you're in London, but everything from the building forward into the street looks like you're in a third world country. They have moved into that country and brought the third world with them. That's what happens. They don't come to assimilate. They come to take over. There's a humongous difference in that. Well, people who have spoken out on that have been jailed, have been fined, have been arrested for various reasons. And we look at that, and I know we laugh. We chuckle at it, right? I do. Because I know that ain't happening to me. That ain't happening to my family. Well, as the globalists put more and more pressure on our upper management, if you will, in the federal government, those things are being encouraged here in the United States. Obviously, Joe Biden, huge globalist. This guy here, bought and paid for by, obviously, Ukraine, China, and clearly he had an issue with favoring Russia because a pipeline that was shut down, that Trump had shut down, immediately Joe Biden, this is a Russian pipeline, uh, Nordstrom 2, uh, 
Biden immediately opened it back up and allowed it to continue. Meanwhile, shut one down here in the United States. So Joe Biden is a bought and paid for globalist. So we already have that in place here. Now, the globalists are patient people. They will let things run their course and settle in. In other words, if you've got people mentally who start to get used to something, this happens all the time here. If they start to hear something and it sounds ridiculous at first, if you keep repeating it, it starts to sound normal. It's You hear it all the time, normalizing whatever. 10, maybe 15 years ago, would you have ever thought that a drag queen would be in an elementary school? No. Even liberals and progressives would have never thought that that was an acceptable thing to do. But the more it got suggested, the more it became acceptable, not by us, but the more some people got used to it. So it didn't seem so outrageous whenever it finally came to be. It seemed kind of normal because they had heard about it so much. That's what's happening with this whole globalist push for your First Amendment rights to be taken from you. Remember, the UN has long tried to have a say in the Second Amendment and First Amendment within the United States, and they fail every single time. Well, look at the global push now. You're starting to see it more and more and more. The founder of the popular messaging app called Telegram is due in court in the coming days after being arrested in a Paris airport, as many grow concerned with free speech and censorship online in the EU. George Washington University Law School professor and Fox News contributor Jonathan Turley is completely against this arrest, and he joins us now. Good morning to you. Hi, Ainsley. Hi, good morning. So the authorities say the app was being used for organized crime, drug trafficking, fraud, cyberbullying, and promotion of terrorism. Despite all of that, you're still against his arrest. Why? I am. People need to realize what's really going on here. We haven't seen anything akin to a charging sheet, but it appears that he's being arrested under these European laws that are designed to force social media companies to engage in censorship. The most infamous for free speech advocates is the Digital Services Act. I discussed the DSA in my new book, uh, The Indispensable Right, because it is one of the greatest threats to free speech that we have today around the world. Uh, European regulators have threatened people like Elon Musk that he needs to censor American citizens, even candidates like President Trump, to remove anything that they consider to be false or disinformation. And this is a global effort to control speech. And so it's hard to be sympathetic with some Russian billionaire, right? I mean, it, it, that's not exactly someone that you rally to the park to defend. But he's being charged with misconduct of others using his site. It's like arresting AT&T CEO because the mob used a telephone uh, to do its business. And the, the, the question for American citizens is whether we're going to allow these global censors to basically control speech from Europe. Free speech is in a free fall in Europe. And Ainsley, it was no accident when Elon Musk bought uh, Twitter. Uh, figures like Hillary Clinton almost immediately went to Europe and called on them to use the DSA. Consider that, uh, to use the DSA to censor American citizens. That's a former presidential candidate calling for censorship through these, these officials. Now say what you will about Russia, like them, don't like them. This guy is a Russian citizen that created essentially a Facebook, if you want to compare it to that. And because he's not doing the Zuckerberg route, which Zuckerberg is the one who's kissing everybody's butt, doing the bidding of the federal government, as long as you are saying what the globalists want you to say and are okay with you to say, like Zuckerberg, you're okay. You fit into their plan. As long as you are censoring the people that the globalists don't like, which is usually free thinkers and not group thinkers, then you're okay also. You're doing their work for them, whether it be on purpose, whether it be planned, or whether it be by accident, just having uh, aligning political ideologies, you're doing what they want, so they're gonna leave you alone. This guy is not doing what they're okay with because he is letting people speak out 
about the atrocities in the UK where they are overrunning that country, in France, Germany, where these migrants are coming in from Africa and completely ruining these countries. They're third worlding these first world countries over there in Europe, ruining them. And it's all because of open borders and letting them just come in, crash wherever they want to and take over the system. Again, I'm gonna have to repeat, the goal of these people who are doing the invading, the roaches, the infestation of these other countries from Africa is to dominate, to take over these cultures. They're not there to assimilate and speak like these people and adopt their ways and their cultures with the land that they actually came to. They're bringing all of their garbage, all of their caveman and inbred technology and thinking and ideology with them. And I say technology, I say that very sarcastically. So they're bringing the culture, the third world culture and ideology and hate with them to these countries. And it's ruining these countries. So that's what's scary about all of this. They are purposely trying to ruin these countries. You can't change a country from within without first ruining it and then rebuilding it the way you want it to. You can't rebuild a country that's already built. You have to tear it down in order to build it back up in your vision. And that's what they're trying to do. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because this is a whole lot closer to home than what you think. Again, back to what I just said about seeing things happening and they have a certain amount of shock value, you see it enough times and it stops shocking you. Did you see this video where this woman in Surprise, Arizona, which what an ironic name for a situation like this, very well-spoken lady. I thought she was very well-spoken. I thought she was super professional. I didn't think she got belligerent. She didn't get nasty. She handled herself very well. Now, I do not know the backstory, so I cannot tell you why this got to this point. But I want you to see this exchange between a taxpayer in Arizona and the mayor of the community in front of city council. There's public records requests that I have open right now that are quote, pending legal review that I am entitled Massey, to request. I've, I've got to interrupt you here because- Okay, are you this, gonna stop this, the timer? This is the public meeting forum that you agree to when you speak. And I want to read this to you that, um, there are oral communications during the city council meeting may not be used to lodge charges or complaints against any employee of the city or members of the body, regardless of whether such person is identified in the presentation by the name or by any other reference that tends to identify him or her. That's all fine, well, and good, but that's so, a violation so that, of my First Amendment yeah, rights. So that's, well, this is your warning. Okay. A warning and for what? A warning for attacking the city attorney personally. Um, this is all factual information. It doesn't matter. You're violating my this First is, Amendment this rights. Is, this is what you agree to when you first speaking. This is the form. It is unconstitutional, Mayor Hall. Well, it's not unconstitutional. It is. And if you're the gonna, Supreme Court if you're has upheld. Continue, I could get up here and I could swear at you for three straight minutes, and it is protected no, speech no, you by can't. the Supreme Court. It is. No, you can't. Why don't you look at case law? No, you can't. I can. So if you want to be also the chair is engaged in debate, so point of order. Be escorted out of here. Do you want to be escorted out You're of here? You're violating my First Amendment stop rights. Talking. You are violating my First Amendment rights. That's your opinion. It's okay. not a matter of opinion. Do you want to be escorted out, Miss Massey? Because that's what's going to happen, and it's going to happen in the future also. Anytime you attack, that's any why you change the rules. Or any. That's city. why you change the rules. This has been on the back of this form. I understand, Mayor Hall, but that is completely unconstitutional. No, it's You're not. also engaging in debate, and so you should actually be anyway, yielding the floor to somebody okay. else managing. Chief, could you have somebody come down here and, and uh, escort Ms. Massey out Really? Is that necessary? Chamber? Yes, I in think In front of is. my 10-year-old daughter, you're going to escort That's me fine. out for expressing my she First Amendment rights. You. She can go with you. I'm not leaving. Well. Can you just sit with me? Um, I'm, no. Okay. I'm expressing my first. Do not touch me. Do not put your hands on me. Can you just step out with me? Do right not here? put your hands on me. Come on out. Do not put your hands on me. Come out with me now before you get arrested. Do you understand? This, are you detaining me? Yes. Why am I being detained? Under what charges? Under what charges? Okay, so I'll... Hey, I I'll, have personal I'll, property. Hold on. I have... You cannot talk with me. Yeah, I know. She can go out there. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to go into E session. Motion to go into E session. Second. Then move to second it. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.
We're going into each session. Arrested in front of her 10-year-old daughter. Manhandled in front of her 10-year-old daughter. You want to talk about the, quote, war on women that everybody on the left always seems to, hey, we got a war on women. You realize that you people support the war, the biggest war on women, whether it be men beating the crap out of women in sports or stuff like this, where you disempower a 10-year-old girl by allowing her mom to get manhandled by a law enforcement officer for what? For speaking her piece. In other words, the message sent to this 10-year-old girl is, shut up, girl, and know your place. This is scary that this happened in America. This isn't the only, only time. We've seen other instances like this over the last couple of years, actually. But this is extremely scary that, first of all, this mayor, well, let's face it, guys, lots of mayors are not smart people. This is a popularity contest. Uh, the mayor that we have here in the town I live in is a complete idiot. It's, he's simply a Facebook photo op guy, right? Anybody wants to open up a new business or whatever, he's going to slap his fat face in the middle of it, and he's going to get a picture, post it on Facebook, and boom, done his job. Most mayors are like that, right? Most mayors are not smart people. This guy clearly hasn't read the Constitution, does not know what he's talking about when he's arguing with her, saying this is not a violation of your First Amendment. It, in fact, is a violation of First Amendment. I don't care what the little writing is on the back of his paper. Let me clear something up real quick. If a store has rules that they expect you to abide by, a private business I'm talking about, they can say that you can't shout in my store. They can say that you can't call me a name in my store. Heck, they can kick you out if they want to, right? They can get you for trespassing or whichever if you refuse to leave. All that's with a private store. This is a taxpayer facility that they are in. You don't have that luxury. The Constitution, no matter what little wording you put on the back of your page to say, these are the rules if you want to speak to us, as long as you are not being belligerent, and at that point, you still could kind of be belligerent, but as long as you are not violating the First Amendment in any kind of way or anybody else's constitutional rights in that building, you can't be run out of there. You can't be told what you can and cannot say. Again, this is not a private business. This mayor does not have the authority to tell her, you cannot say that in here because we have rules here. I know she agreed to the rules, but she is a taxpayer and his salary is paid by her. And that is a public facility that is open to people to air their grievances. And she was not allowed to do that. And again, I don't know the backstory, but it doesn't matter. They should have to listen to this woman every time she has a grievance to file during their little powwows and shindigs and circle jerks. This is closer to home than you think it is. This kind of shocking video that is shocking to me, because most of us would never allow this to happen, but it starts to become normal when you see it over and over again. The next time we see it, it's going to shock us a little bit less. It's still going to make us mad, but it will shock us a little bit less every single time to the point where some people, not saying I would, not saying you would, but some people will at some point go, eh, they'll just accept it. They will allow it to happen. And they go, well, I guess that's just the way it is now. We in the Second Amendment community are long used to this. We've been mistreated. We've been squashed. We've been censored. You go try to put a, a comment in this video right now and watch how many times you have to word it just right until it actually takes because YouTube is constantly censoring and removing comments from all of our comment sections within the Second Amendment community. But what's scary about this is that's just a comment section. And yeah, they're demonetizing it. For the most part, our videos, which show no violence, no terrorism, uh, no pornography, nothing like that, they're still allowed to be played, right? They may not benefit us monetarily or whatever, but they're still visible, right? What happens if we normalize this type of behavior by the powers that be, and especially we start to empower these social media places like you saw this guy get thrown in jail, like they're threatening to throw Elon Musk in jail. All these people start saying, I'm just doing my job, man. The Facebook's out there, the YouTube's out there start saying, I'm just doing my job, man. That's just that the government is starting to crack down on terroristic speech. They're starting to crack down on hate speech and misinformation. So, hey, man, I'm just doing my job. I got to take your video down. I got to close your channel down. I got to shut you up. Okay, fine. So what if now channels like Guns and Gadgets suddenly put out news on new legislation and it gets deemed for being misinformation? 
just because he's passing these facts along, not because he's stating his opinion even. He's simply a news channel. What if he puts something out and because YouTube and Google doesn't like it and whoever else is pushing those buttons at the top, they pull his video down and maybe put him in the corner, put his channel in the corner for a week, two weeks, or a month. Don't let him put anything out there. Just because he spread facts that were literally factual data and information, but they don't like it. It's not within the realm of the things that they find acceptable so they say, nope, not going to happen on my platform. What if Heavy Duty Country puts a video out talking about how law enforcement violated somebody's rights when they busted into their house and just maybe he casually mentions what you should do if that ever happens to you. Now he's going to get hit with hate speech? Is that what's going to happen? Now his video gets put in a corner, given time out, because now he's delivering hate speech? What if Mr. Guns and Gear puts a video out like he's been doing lately on some of the weird questionable things in the Trump assassination attempt? What now? Misinformation? Because he's asking the right questions and asking why are we not being told these answers? Now he's going to get Dean put in a corner, put in time out because he's spreading misinformation? Now remember, this is not for everybody. This is meant to be delivered by a certain subset of people to a certain subset of people. If you're saying misinformation, terroristic thoughts, we know the stuff that I can't say on here where children would be involved in a really bad, unethical way. If you know what I mean, I can't say those words or this video will not exist anymore. That's allowed, depending on who puts it out there. And if the religion, the peaceful religion of Islam puts something out where different people's area from the neck area on up just doesn't exist anymore, if you know what I'm talking about, those videos exist out there too on YouTube. They'll put a guy like Mike, like Jared, like Dan in time out and scratch their channel because they don't like what they're saying to free thinkers out there. But to the group thinkers that are watching all that other crap that they allow, they're okay with that. And those videos will continue to exist. Don't think it's close. Don't think it's going to happen here. Recognize this guy? Not the butchy looking lady with the big thick neck on the left. I'm talking about Tim Walsh on the right. That is your VP candidate for the Democrat Party. You want to hear something that he said recently? I think we need to push back on this. There, there's no guarantee to free speech on misinformation or, or hate speech, and especially around our democracy. Everything he said was wrong. I'm not going to get into the democracy thing now, but we are a constitutional republic. Hate speech, misinformation. Who determines that? Those are subjective things. Who determines that what I just said would be classified as hate speech, right? This guy's saying that the First Amendment doesn't cover that. It actually does cover that. The, the First Amendment covers actual hate speech. I can sit here and say the most hateful things in the world. Now, granted, the private companies like the YouTubes and whatnot won't allow that. But I could go stand on a street corner and spout these things, and it's perfectly legal. The First Amendment says so. We live in America still, right? It hasn't been transformed yet. So this guy is saying that the First Amendment does not apply to those things. It absolutely does. But if you're the ones who are writing the rules, and you're the ones who are creating the rule book, you get to decide what's hate speech and what is misinformation. So one side creates the playbook, the rule book rather, and they decide also the enforcement of that particular rule book. Guess who's going to lose on that one and guess who's going to win? I can tell you this much, the American people lose in that respect. Guys, we got to wake up. We got to vote. We got to be very outspoken in this upcoming election because these people that are running for this office right now are very much in the hip pocket of globalists across this entire world. I realize that there are plenty that are on, quote, our side, who are globalists as well. Make no mistake, I am not that naive. These people don't try to hide it. They're right in your face, and they are literally saying it to our face. There's no guarantee to free speech on misinformation. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry, I thought this was America.